Our next step, we're gonna talk about brushes. And I love getting new brushes. It is so much fun because they just, if you have a good brush, your whole watercolor experience is just so much fun. It's like Christmas morning anytime I get new brushes. And I always keep my old brushes too because I, I like to be really soft and gentle with my new brushes. And then my old brushes are fun for like when I do a lot of stippling and I wanna add some texture. I've got some really good old brushes that I like to use for that. So I want to talk to you guys a couple things about brushes. We're gonna talk about synthetic versus natural hair. We're gonna talk about the size of brushes and the different types of brushes, and then also how to care for your brushes. So let's start with synthetic versus natural hair. This is honestly, and everybody has their preference again on this. Okay, so it's up to you. I like a natural hair brush. Um, I feel like it holds the water better. I feel like they go on smoother and um, I enjoy taking care of them more. I don't know what it is when I just know that it's a natural hair. I just feel like I have, it's, it might just be me, but I just feel like I have more um, respect for my brushes. Is that bad to say? It might be, I don't know, but I just, I feel fancier with them. And so I'd like to take really good care of them. Whereas my synthetic ones, sometimes they're cheaper and um, they don't require as much care. And so that's also a good thing. If you don't want to put a lot of care into your brushes, they don't require much. As far as brush care, while we're here, um, natural hair brushes, you'll want to rinse out and wash often. Luckily, watercolor is a uh, very soluble, um, it's a very soluble medium. So you don't have to, um, wash them and rinse them every single use. I paint every day. So it's good for me to wash them maybe once a month, once every two weeks, something like that. And honestly, all you do for that, I'll do a demo on it just so you can see, but if a soap is soft enough for your hands, it's soft enough for your brushes. So I just get a little bit of soap and water in my hand and I just kind of mix my brush around like this and kind of wash it out and then just rinse it. Um, with synthetic, grade brushes, you do not have to put any oil on them, but with a natural hair brush, you'll want to. So I keep a little container with uh, coconut oil. And after I rinse my brushes, every single use, whether I wash them or not, I rinse them out real good. And then I put a little bit of coconut oil on them. I just dip them right inside this jar. And then I kind of reshape the brush. If you don't do this with the natural hair brush, you'll find that they kind of will fray more because it is a natural hair. You want to keep that, that hair. It's like when you don't put any like product in your hair and it gets all frizzy, right? Same idea. You want to put some oil in your brushes so that way they don't go all frizzy and crazy. Synthetic brushes, you can probably do that. It might help them stay around a little longer, but honestly, I've never taken that kind of care with my synthetic brushes. So, I mean, it's up to you. As far as price on brushes, again, this is so subjective. I have used paint brushes um, that were $2.97 from Walmart, and I thought that they were pretty decent brushes. I will say that they didn't hold the water as well, um, and I had to dip it in the water more, and that part got frustrating. So, I mean, but they were $2.97. I mean, whatever, right? I got done with those, and now I use those for texture brushes. Um, and then I upgraded my paint brushes. I've bought um, I usually spend around the $30 to $45 price range on my brush sets, and I usually will make sure that it has multiple brushes in it. Um, the brush types that I look for are round brushes with a good variety of round brushes. So my favorite type of brushes are the ones I've linked below. They're called Nick Pro um, is the brand on them. And I just recently got these. I will say my one feedback is that even just after using them for just a little bit, the wording on the side has already started to come off. So I don't particularly care for that. However, I can just tell by looking at a brush about what size it is, but these ones have from every size from zero all the way up to 10. Um, so a good round 10 brush, if you can see, it's a good thick brush versus this one is a zero. So it's a good detail brush, if that helps you. Um, so I look for a good variety in round brushes. And then I also like a good flat brush. And I usually, when I'm looking for a flat brush, I'm looking for about a one inch, that's what this one is. And this is great for washes, for like skies and stuff. It gets a good amount of area and then you can also turn it and do the side of it 
um, and get a thin area. So I like these. The one brush that I think is optional, um, but so fun, so, so fun, um, is a fan brush. Um, and not very many watercolor paintbrush sets have these, but we are going to do some tutorials where we um, review kind of, I, am I allowed to say Bob Ross? I don't know if I'm allowed to say Bob Ross, but this is what we're gonna do. We, <laughs> we are going to look at his paintings and look at his um, style that he approaches with oil paints and then look at the technique and change how we have to use it for watercolor. But he uses fan brushes for trees, you guys, and they are so fantastic. We're gonna use them for trees too. So if you have a round brush, great. If not, you can do it without it, but it is a lot of fun. Um, I said round, I meant fan, fan brush. It's a lot of fun. Okay, um, so those are the different types of brushes, different sizes of brushes, um, different like material, if you will, the synthetic versus natural hair. And then again, that comes into cost. So there's some, the Princeton round, or excuse me, the Princeton brushes are like awesome. I really, really wish I had some of those but it's probably like, I think they range from like eight to $15 a brush. And I honestly, that's just not in my budget. So I like to get a good set of them. These Nick Pro brushes that I use that I've been recommending to you guys, I think I got them for like $30 on Amazon and there was 15 brushes in there. So they average about $2 a brush. That's much more affordable and cost-effective for me for great, still fantastic set of brushes. So it's entirely up to you guys, what you guys want to use. Um, but that's kind of what I like to use and kind of my opinion on those brushes. Again, you get what you pay for, read the reviews, but I'll put a couple links to a couple different sets of brushes that I have used and I enjoyed. Um, and I will never steer you wrong in the brushes that I've used. So, or at least of my opinion of them, everybody has their own opinion. Um, but I'll, sh I'll kind of guide you to the ones that I've used and I'll tell you what I like and what I didn't like about them in the comments below. Okay. Next, we're going to move to paints. 